Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy, and this is another one of my quick tips. Uh, today I want to go back and revisit the subject of suitcase connectors. You know, they're a great, quick, and easy way to do your model railroad wiring without having to use a soldering iron. So, let's go ahead and get started. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Now, I originally did a video on suitcase connectors back, I think it was video number 27. And there were other videos that I did as well. So, just what are suitcase connectors and how do they work? Well, basically, they're a little plastic device, originally designed, I believe, by 3M. Uh, and they're also known as an IDC, or insulation displacement connector. And the way they work is, they have this little metal blade here that sits in them, and it has two little slits in it. And when you close the connector and crimp this little uh, metal piece down, it goes down over top of the wires. So you'd have two wires. You'd have the main wire that you're connecting to, and then you'd have the feeder wire or whatever it is that you're connecting to the main wire. And when you close down on this, when you crimp it down over those two wires, uh, the wires are forced into these little slits. And those slits in that moment that uh, of crimping uh, cut through the insulation layer on the piece of wire. And that's why they're called an insulation displacement connector. So they cut through the insulation layer and then they cut into uh, the wire itself. And that's why the first thing that I'm going to tell you uh, is very important. And that's always use the right size connector for the piece of wire that you're working with. Because if you use a connector that has a slit that is too small for the piece of wire, it can cut through the insulation and bite deeply into that piece of wire. And it can weaken it and over time, after it's flexed a little bit, it could break and you can lose electrical connectivity. Now, the other thing is, if you use one that is too large for the wire that you're working with, it might not make a good connection. It might not bite into the wires deep enough, and you might not get any connection at all, uh, or it might just be intermittent. So that's why you might hear people say, oh, those suitcase connectors, they don't work. It's because they've been using the wrong size connector with the wrong size wire. Now. What size wires are we talking about? Well, uh, the, the two that I, I have seen most commonly used are this brown one here, and it's the number 567. And this is sized for number 10 and 12 gauge main wires, and let me check, uh, and 18 to 14 gauge taps or feeders. Okay. Now, that's for the large wires. For the uh, smaller wires, I use the 3M number 905, and this will cover probably 95% of most model railroaders' needs, because it is set for a 14 to 22 gauge main run wire, and 22 to 18 gauge feeders or taps. So it's great for most of your DCC main power buses, and for the feeders that come off of it, uh, you can connect tortoises to power buses, all kinds of things. It's just great for those kinds of, of applications. And so I don't buy anything but these as far as those kind of, of, of operations. Now, there are other kinds as well. For example, allelectronics.com, and I've mentioned them many times in my videos, they make a similar type of connector called a quick splice. And what they're set up for is to splice two wires together. So they're set up with a range of, say, for this one, of 22 to 18 gauge. So you could use a, a 22 or an 18 gauge wire uh, in here and splice two together, and that's what these are made for. So they're not made from, for, for feeders, basically. They're made for connecting two wires. So they, they have applications on a model railroad as well. And they come in different sizes. And so just check 
the onelectronics.com website and look for quick splices. Now, another type, and these are made by both 3M and All Electronics. 3M calls them a T-tap. Um, All Electronics calls them, I believe, a quick tap. So you get the quick splice, the quick tap, you've got the suitcase connector or IDC connector, and then you've got the T-tap. Now the way these work, they're very similar in operation to the suitcase connector. They have the little metal piece in here, and that closes down over the main wire that you're connecting to. And on the side, they have another little notch. And when that's closed and your connection is made to the main wire, and then you can take another wire here with a uh, spade connector on it, quick connector, and just slide it into a little slot here on the side, and it slides into that slit on the side of the metal blade, making the connection. And the great thing is that's easily removed. You can just pull it out of there and plug it back in again. So for something that you might want to remove at some time or disconnect, this is great. Uh, otherwise, you can just use your quick splices or your uh, suitcase connectors to make those type of connections. Now, this is an example of one of those type of connections. So I've got my 14 gauge main run wire here, and I've got about an 18 gauge or 22 gauge wire here. So as you can see, the main bus wire runs right through uh, one area on the connector, and then this one just slides into it. And then there's a little stop right here cast in. So this only goes in so far. And then when you close down and crimp on this, it's going to give you a good tight connection and an electrical connection there. It's usually something that you're not going to be disconnecting in the future, like a feeder or something of that nature. Okay, so let's talk quickly about another thing. Uh, using the right crimper for the job. Some people I know have just used standard pliers for these. Also, I've seen companies like Micromark sells a crimper designed just for use with these. I use these Irwin vice grip channel lock type pliers because when they close down, they give you a good square crimp. So you can just put that on there and pinch down and it will close down on the wire and make the crimp for you. And that is a very good straight, uh, tight crimp. And so I recommend this type of pliers, the channel locks, um, the, you know, Irwin vice grips are just one type of channel lock pliers. Now, there's a third thing to remember about this. If you ever have to take these apart for some reason, say you need to replace a wire uh, or a feeder or whatever for any reason, never try to reuse these connectors. Because once they are crimped and the metal, uh, uh, metal blade uh, is used, it tends to get a little bit out of shape and it won't work as well in subsequent uses. So don't try to reuse these. Just toss them away. They cost about a quarter each. So you can toss them and then use a new one. Never try to reuse these. Now, fourth, you can only use one wire in each one of these positions at a time, okay? You can't run two wires through the run side. You can't run two wires into the tap side. You can only use one wire for each side. That's it. You can't put two wires in here and run two off of there. You have to make two connections. Okay, so that's it. Uh, pretty concise uh, roundup of four things to know about using suitcase connectors. So go ahead, go back, take a look at the videos that I've linked to here and the one that I mentioned, number 27. Uh, there's about four videos that I, I know of where I have used these suitcase connectors uh, here in the past couple of years. So go back, take a look at those videos for much more in-depth information on how to use them and which ones to use for each type of job. Well, that's a wrap for today's video on how to use suitcase connectors for your quick and solderless connections on your wiring buses and anywhere that you need to make either a drop or a quick splice. So take a look at those videos and I've posted additional links to some others here uh, as well as the uh, one number 27 that I showed you earlier. And uh, 
go back and take a look at uh, those and refresh yourself on how I use these suitcase connectors to do all of my wiring here on the Piedmont Southern and on the module that we built last year. So have a great week and we'll see you here on Friday with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.